Hi guys, I hope you're well and we're here for another Hooked on Angling. Uh, we're doing beginners match angling with John Irvin this evening. So we're going to do a little bit of a chat first, uh, make sure the test is working all right and we're coming through nice and clear. Excuse the noise, again I've been shut into the conservatory as always and it's starting to rain so there's a bit of pitter patter going on on the roof so you might hear there's a bit of a rain sort of hammering down around me. Um, so that's it really, everything's been going really well in the world of UK angling. I um, hope you all enjoyed the last feed we did with Dave Mutton in regards to catfishing. I hope you guys found it quite informative and quite interesting. Uh, Dave's a really awesome guy and I got a bit of feedback from him saying obviously that he's had a lot of people obviously contact him and message him for advice, which is spot on really, it's what we really really wanted it to do. So that was absolutely awesome. Um, moving forward, uh, obviously the weather's sort of starting to chirp up a little bit over though it's raining, so I know you guys, uh, a lot of guys have been out fishing recently, I've been seeing a lot of images of people catching carp and other species, which is awesome. Yes, I'm wearing the pink UK Angling hoodie today, purely because I couldn't find my one, so I've stolen my wife's. It's new sound effects, I know it makes it feel more natural, Chris, mate, I'll, I'll still have a little bivy set up here, but you know, a little bit of tip and tap on the roof, make me get some rods out, I feel like I'm actually fishing for the night. Um, so yeah, everything's going really, really, really well. Uh, there's no issues. Uh, can everyone see me all right? Is it nice and clear? Is everything nice and sort of good? Hello, Paul. Hello, Neil. Hello, Stuart. I'm hoping everything goes nice and smooth. Now we've upgraded the internet, everything seems to be working a lot, lot smoother and a lot, lot better. So, again, well, how it's going to work, uh, we're going to get John on in a little while. Where he's going to give us sort of a lowdown about match angling. Obviously, John's more of a match angling than I am. Um, so he's going to give you a rundown, sort of like, what match angling involves, some of the equipment it involves, some of the tackle. Hello Dax, how you doing buddy? Um, and then what he's going to do is give you sort of advice on potentially if you want to become a match angler and some of the sort of like the roads and courses you can go down to obviously get into your first matches because we get asked quite a lot from people. Um, hi Paul, hi Steve, I'm very well. We get a lot of people to ask, you know, messaging the group or the page just saying obviously I'm interested in match angling. What do I do? Where do I go? And where do I start? So hopefully um, John will be able to give you them sort of answers. Again, um, Wednesday we've got myself. Uh, it's going to be tell sort of just a chat about Dimmick Pit Fishery, sort of how I got it, what went on, the sort of what's meant to be in there, what I've stocked it, and what I've been doing with it. And then on, I've got to add some more to the uh, to the the events list, as it were. And then on Sunday, I think we've got uh, Terry Dempsey from Urban Bait is going to jump on and have a chat about, uh, obviously, his sort of side of fishing and obviously the, the Urban Bait range. And this gives a bit of insight of what it's angling's like and it means to him. And then we've got one more person and then we're going to start going back round. So we're going to revisit uh, carping uh, with Sam King, which will be more of a slightly intermediate sort of uh, conversation. So it'll be a little bit better. Uh, you know, so it'll be a little bit more advanced. The first time we just touched on sort of basics of angling, basic things like what you know, rods, reels, sort of set up, carp safety, um, and then we're gonna sort of do what we're trying to do is trying to do like a, a relaxed chat with someone, and then we're gonna do like a topic, and we're gonna just try and sort of muster through that. And uh, then we have got well, Chris Hampton's gonna come on and do his talk about Beacon Lake, uh, Mount Farm, and then we've got a couple of other carp anglers who are gonna jump on and have a chat as well. And then, by the time we've gone through all these sort of bits and pieces, and we sort you know, it gets right back, we're going to go back to the stage of, then we've got Dave Mutton's going to come back on and sort of talk about sort of like spring, spring stroke, summertime catfishing again. And then we do a few more, and it'll come back round to sort of like, um, we've got some rig talk, so it's going to keep floating round and round and round. So we, and then, what are we going to do as well, uh, in regards to talks, we're going to try and do things, so like when it's uh, pike season, we'll talk about pike, you know, when you know when it's sort of like summertime, we'll speak about summer carping, you know, when it's to due to like end of March, sort of where we're like, yeah, I'm going to give him a, I'm going to message him later this evening to book him in, Chris, uh, now I'm sort of sat down, everything's sorted, we're going to sort of message a few more people, um, and then we're going to do like a, I'm going to do like a talk about tench, I might do some rig talks myself about the basic rigs that I use at work, and yeah, that's it really, that's that's how we're going to keep pan out. So we're just literally waiting for John Irvin, he should pop up shortly to join us. Uh, we all start a little bit early just to have a quick chat and to make sure everything is okay. We still approach a lot of other companies and a lot of other anglers to see if they want to get involved. Um, like I said, we're going to get Rich Willby on again as well. He was absolutely awesome. I enjoyed the conversation with him, which is quite nice because there was a lot of mixed species he spoke about. Hi Paul, how are you doing buddy? So, 
you know, move, moving forward, we, we, yeah, we've approached a few other people and other groups and other companies and things like that and said they're more than welcome to join us on the live feed. Some of them are sort of up for it, others aren't. Uh, it's a funny old world with the angling. It seems that some people want to get involved and take part and some people think there's a hidden agenda or an incentive. Like we say, when we get anyone on, especially if there aren't anything to do with UK angling directly, we never push any brands on them. We never mention anything. We allow them to talk all about their brand, all about their group. We encourage them to talk about what they're up to and their stuff. So this is hopefully in, in the next sort of like time people start giving us a tinkle and we'll get more people on. So like I say, it's 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 going well. I mean, we've had a lot of a nightmare before setting up, but yeah, I'm really, really happy about we're finally, finally going forward. Um, anyone that's interested in the UK angling side of things, you know, we do have a bait range, we do have a clover range, we do have a tackle range, and we, we are sort of multi-species. So we do have a range of course, carp, uh, a match one's building, a bait range is developing every other, every other week, and the clover is sort of quite uh, a mix. So we do lots of sort of things like images of sort of catfish and perch, not all just carp. And we try and keep the prices as low as possible for people. And we are a registered and legal company. Yeah, it's off my phone, Dax, buddy. It should be a lot better now. I've, I've upgraded all my internet and, uh, and I've got a little light. I stole a light off my daughter and my missus the other day so you can see my face. So, yeah, it, it's running a lot better. And I've just sort of basically in the conservatory shoved up some tarpaulin. I've got loads of fishing gear around me anyway. We've got like a fish uh, tank we're going to do some rig talks in in the future where you can see how the bait works and how the trod rigs sit and we can answer questions over the phone or, or, or via the, the live feed. So yeah, it's uh, it's, it's on my phone, Dax. It's, it's not, I don't really fancy drop, dropping it in the water like you did. Um, but it seems to be getting me by. So basically, if you've got any questions in regards to match fishing, try and hold off to sort of like the back end of uh, like the live feel. We're gonna have, like I say, have a chat for a little while. I mean, we are on early. It doesn't always start till seven, but again, I always want to come on a little bit early just to have a little chat to make sure everything's working really well. You got the connection of you. Yeah, I've, I've dimmed the light because I look really, la last time I looked a bit pale and it was a bit bit too much. Some people were saying, so I've dimmed the light down. I've angled things are slightly a bit different, and it seems to be working a lot lot better. So hopefully, once we're fishing. Uh, and out on the, on the bank. I mean, we know we're potentially going to be back on the night soon, which will be really, really interesting. Um, what's been going on? I know it's uh, it's just it's just fun days. It's been a long day today. It's been a long, long day. We've been working. Uh, we're going to be doing leads and things as well. I'm going to be talked on leads as well. Uh, some people don't understand what the different sizes and weights of carp leads are used for. Things like the pairs or the distance lead. So we're going to do a little tutorial on that, and you can ask any questions about them. So just to sort of bump up your knowledge. As always, we always say to people, if you want to put a comment on that show, you can the main page. If there's any topics that you particularly want to cover, I mean, now we're going to do uh, hopefully do long range casting at some point soon. Um, yeah, so this is lots of things to talk about. Fishing is a massive, massive thing. I'm actually interested in getting a few other people on as well. I'm probably going to pull Dax on for a live feed to have a quick chat or have a, have a chat in the future about what's going on in wild farm fishery. I want to pull Trev Price up and talk about alders if he's available to talk about alders. Also, I want to pull up Dave Rice to talk about the Alcove Syndicate. Um, and also, I'm going to try and get some representatives. Uh, I'm from Milton Keynes, and you know, it'd be nice to get some representatives of the MKA on um, to have a chat. You know, maybe the bailiffs to chat about what's going on with Milton Keynes waters, and maybe the same as the Newport Pagnell pits as well. Get Graham or Aid on to have a chat about what's going on with Newport Pagnell fisheries, because it's coming to that time now that we're all going to be able to get, start getting back on a bank, and it's just nice to know what's going on in, in, in your local area. So. And that's it. So, like, so we're all open for. Uh, we're always open to discussion. Uh, we have hooked to an angling group as well, which is still there. It's been running sort of side by side. Of course, Dax, it'd be good fun, Dax, to have a chat with you. We'll definitely organise it about what's going on up at your end of the pond at Poddington. As always, Dax runs Wild Wild Farm Fisheries, which is at Poddington. It's an amazing, amazing fishery. He's got. Uh, you've got the, the main lake, which is Wild Lake, and I think it's got about three others. Uh, it's even, I think it's got like a trout lake or a fly fishing lake going on up there as well. I don't know if Dax is doing a shoot. You know, he did have a shooting range planned up there. I'm not sure if, he's, if that's gone ahead. But always bounce over, drop Dax a message. He'll always answer. He's good for that. And obviously get yourself up there. He's got the main lake. He's got uh, lots of cat and lots of carp. It's a... Uh, I don't know how many pegs he's got on it, but it's got a lot of carp, a lot of, carp, a lot of cat, it's got lots of images. You hit the website, you'll see exactly what goes on down there. Um, Alders Fishery as well, they've got one, two, three, they've got, quite a, they've got a couple, like two or three main lakes full of matches, full of carp, a mixed species, and they have quite a few little, smaller lakes, which is, you know, they're quite good for beginners. So if you're a beginner in the angling world, 
uh, if you get yourself up to old swine fish, we'd have a few little ponds. It's like free swims. I mean, you can normally see little carp swimming around, which is a great, great way to start off your little angling career by having a little go in there. If you've never done it before, you know, it's a good, good place to go. Excuse the pause, I'm gasping today. It's been, one of the, it's been one of a long, long day. It's a lot of people, they don't understand that they think my life is UK angling, and I do is do UK angling. All I do is the fishing lake, and all I do the baits. But I'm actually, like I said, time and time again, I'm a tradesman. So I work quite a lot, and I do all this in my spare time to try and sort of push the angling ethos around and try and obviously get more people involved in angling and try and angle more at the positive sides of angling as well. Not So it's not just all... You do get a bit of negativity out here. So we try and uh, push and promote more of a sort of like um, sort of chirpy friendly atmosphere and uh, amongst a bunch of nice anglers so Danny Booth hope you're doing well got to go yes Dax I'll catch you later on mate take care and have a safe evening and look after your family uh, that's forever growing my friend so Chris Hamilton's been doing doing quite well I think he's been down Dimmicks he's been pre-baiting ready for the um, well hopefully for the night start again but it's been a lot of boshing around in there we try and find me our pal John Irvin. He should be popping up soon. Let's see if we can find him. It's fine. There he is. John Irvin. Right. We've been trying this for a while. So hopefully this will work nice and clear. Safe so, that day. Hopefully this will pop up in a few. I'm just telling you, John. John, you're sideways. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to stand it up. There we are, mate. You all right, John? Yeah, I'm good, mate. You? Yeah, not bad. I'm a bit tired today, I believe. It's been a long, long day today. You know it's Mother's Day, but it was a long day yesterday, and then today's been quite a long day, sort of like washed around and that. So, um, keeping well, bud? Yeah, I'm keeping well. Busy day today myself, really. Yeah, bless Mother's you. Mother's Day. Cooking roast dinner, you know. <laughs> John's been cooking. Nice, bud. So, John, um, for people that don't know, just give us a, a start off on, on what match angling is about, uh, how they can get involved in it, and then some of the bits. So... Firstly, for me, match angling, you need to find yourself a good fishing club or find yourself somewhere where they do open matches. So you can go along, you can um, see how they're fishing. And the main thing is to, to speak to the anglers about get your kit ready. Yeah, Dow gets his kit ready. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, find yourself a good fishing club. So... Obviously, MKA have got a fishing club, haven't they? So you can go along yeah. with them, run some matches with them. Um, orders, go down to Orders. They've got a opens that have probably 20 or 30 people every week. So the best thing to do is to go along, speak to them guys, get to know the water with them, and learn their tricks and their tips. That's the way how, how you're going to do it. I see, basically, just... just... You know, it's a lot to join your local club and it's inquire about joining the matches. Um, yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I've always been touch with olders. That's always been the most match kind of place in, in, in my world. And I'm not saying, just before you come on, they've got a lot of little ponds that you can sort of practice on if, you, if, you're, if you're just getting into sort of fishing, is it well? With, fishing, with yeah. yeah, so I've done, I've done a few matches down at Alders and we've done our UK angling matches down there, haven't we? Yeah. Um, on pines and ash and to be fair if you're going to do match fishing the best thing you can do is throw yourself in the deep end mm. and i think um the boys down at alders are really good match anglers you know the likes of you've got trevor price lee newson you know you've got pete archer that goes down there these are top top match anglers you know what i mean these are really they are good match anglers so yeah if you're gonna try and do it seriously throw yourself in the deep end and go do a couple of opens with them and they are quite friendly you know they will teach you stuff if what i found is you go to a few opens especially like me and dal bosworth done quite a few a few years ago we went along quite a lot and um just talking to them before the match because you'll draw your peg you're all going for a cup of tea you draw your peg and if you can speak to i don't know someone like pete archer or trevor price or even colin kidd Anybody like that, you speak to them before the match and they'll give you tips, they'll give you pointers of your peg, they'll tell you how they would fish it, you know. And that half an hour before the match and maybe half hour while you're weighing in afterwards, that mm. conversation you have with the anglers, you can learn so much from them. How, how long does a match generally run for, John? Are they like um, three hours or...? Yeah, it, it varies where you go. It's normally five, six hours, so... 
You normally roll up about half seven, have a bacon roll, a cup of tea, have a chill out, have a chat. Um, you probably do sort of a half eight, nine o'clock draw. Um, probably, eight, yeah, probably about eight o'clock draw. And then you'll start fishing about 10. And then you'll probably go to 10 till three, probably. I know a lot of places don't like their fish in the keep nets longer than five to six hours. That's sort of the rule wherever you go. You yeah. won't keep you won't keep the carp in the keep nets, and obviously they have weight limits as well. So you need to yeah. ask the questions before and after of the rules of that fishery and what's happening so, there. Really. So, so talking setup, John. So what what for if you were just about to go, say you, you've got no experience, and you, well, I want to get involved in match and then and you you found a local club and you spoke to a few boys. Um, yeah. Starting to, oh, what would you suggest people do? Do they go right out and buy a pole, or do they get a rod and do pellet waggling, or what would be, would you say, the easiest and cheapest, really? Because they might not really like it. So, the cheapest sort yeah. of way to get involved to, to almost have a taster. Yeah, you can go down the route of a pole. They're not really, they, if you want to buy a brand new one, it's going to be expensive, yeah. You can pick up second hand poles, you know, 200 quid for a decent pole, you know, just to start you off. But if you're going to start off a few open matches, you're probably going to need something. Obviously, you're going to need something to sit on. Yeah. So you don't need a seat box. You know what I mean? It's nice to have one. Do you know what I mean? Because you've got yeah. all your attachments. You've got your, your rod rests, your feeder arms, your keep net adapters. You've got your bait bowl adapters. You've got your umbrella <laughs> stuff. You know, there's loads <laughs> to it. Do you know what I mean? But you can literally just take a chair, rod rest, and if it was me probably feeder fishing just use a method feeder it's so simple any yeah. angler can go pick a method feeder out of fishing republic or right there pick a yeah. pick a feeder fisher up and set it up and, and fish straight away and catch yeah. because the method feeder it catches fish itself you know yeah. pretty much tangle proof you use a four inch hook length and your method feeder we'll, we'll obviously go through that a bit better yeah. on some live videos yeah. but um yeah method feeder you can start off with obviously you need keep nets mm -hmm. um do you, do you have two? I, I see sometimes you have two do you have two keep nets or just one what's that what's that about yeah so you need you need um you need a, a minimum of a three meter carp net mm -hmm. that's 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 for all your carp and then you've also got to have a silver net as well because you, you can't mix your silvers and your carp together you will some places you'll get disqualified and you do have weight limits so I think, oh, Sean's on here. He'll tell me what the weight limit is at orders. It used to be £100. Okay. Um, I think it, think it's still £100. I think when we've done a match, we were fishing and Sean was over on peg, he was over the back on like peg 18 or 19 and he clicked up and you'll see the match anglers have a little clicker. Oh yeah, I've seen them do it. When I've been filming you guys, I've been like, tip, 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 yeah. That's it. So Sean will, Sean will be sitting there with oh, Dale saying £60 now, so it's down to £60. And you'll see Sean will be there with his clicker or Dale and say he catches a car, he'll be like, that's £3, one, two, three. And then you'll know how much is in each keep net because if you okay. go over your keep net, that net is disqualified. That net's out if you go over. If it's £60, like Dale says, I can't remember. I've been up there for a little while. If it's £60 and you're £61 in that net, that's and it. You, take it out, you weigh it. That's gone. It's dead. Because because there can be because I mean I've been been watching a bit on TV here and there. There, there can be a lot of money in match angling if you get to a certain stage in, in competing, can't there? Yeah, if you sort of if you can go down like the feeder masters sort of route and fish these golden reel opens and stuff like that. Some of them are like 50, 60 grand, even a hundred grand for the winner. You know, really? so if you get good at it. You know there is there is money to be had, but obviously you've got you've got you've got to practice. Yeah, match fishing is brutal. Laugh out loud. Uh, we knew we'd get that. We knew you always get that. No, yeah. but I say no. I mean, I, I I've seen lots. A lot of us are going to get involved with the match angling this year and have a go because yeah, obviously great. we've not all done. I like the fact that it keeps you busy. So, yeah. I mean, I, I don't mind. I like carp fishing, but sometimes I find you once you get words out, you sit there and you, you're puzzled. But when I've been watching you. Um, fishing, you, you're constantly active, and yeah. I've, I've picked a few things off. You know, like just by watching you, like the way you mix your ground bait is, is a lot different to how I used to do it. That's and it yeah. I remember, I remember having a chat with you about pellet waggling. So I went down, uh, um, no, I went down teardrops, just a pellet waggler and a handful, a box of pellets. 
Mm. I've, seen, I've seen the pellets everywhere, and I just had a little pellet on a pellet band on a hook, and I, I, was, I was destroying it in the morning. I was catching four or five yeah. carp in the morning, for like an hour and a half before work. And I think yeah, it's just, I was, I was a lot quite like, lucky because I managed to get on the Garbolino day at Alders. So I think once a year before COVID, they had a Guru day, they had a Maver day, and they had a Garbolino day. So you pay your 50 quid or whatever it is, and you you all get around the lake, and whoever the match anglers, the sponsored match anglers who fish for that, whoever it is, Garbolino, if it's Guru, it's Adam Rooney, if it's Garbolino, it's Simon Fry, whoever it is, they come round and they'll give you half hour of their time and they'll sit really? you at your peg and they'll say, right, is there anything I can help you with? You know what I mean? And I was oh. quite fortunate for the Garbolino day. Um, I sat with Simon Fry and we just done some pellet bag feeding. And he literally, it might sound stupid, but he showed me how to cast it properly. Yeah. And I just thought, you just throw your float out and, and that's it. No. You know, but he taught me how to cast, put your finger on the spool, stop it with your spool, not your, stop, stop the line going with your finger instead of your bail arm, like flicking your bail arm over, um, stuff like that, how to feed it properly, reel your, reel your pellet into your, into your bait, so fling a few pellets over, then knock your float into your bait, you know, do that yeah. three times, recast. So it was, it's tough, it's days like that, that I've learned, I've learned, I've learned loads, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's mastering your art, isn't it? You know, you, you've got to go yeah. down, you've got to practice, and you've got to have certain techniques, certain waters, but I suppose, the, um, is there a circuit of regular anglers that will go around to venues? Is there like a... a yeah, 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 yeah. So down orders, you get your regular guys. You go down the old oak fishery, you got your you got your regular guys on them sort of matches and even on the even on the big matches, you know, you've got your regular top anglers that obviously fish them all the time and you know. I mean, if, it for, if, if, if it wasn't for COVID, are you allowed to go and just sort of sit sit and watch or is it quite not allowed to no, go down? No, so and, for me, I'm not bothered about it because I'm not really that good. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> I would turn up and like I don't mind if you want to come along and stand behind me, but you know, the rule is quite, don't it be get, competitive. It'd be quite competitive. Yeah, it's really obviously these guys are fishing for money, so they'll be putting mm. I don't know ten or 10, ten or twenty quid in each, and if there's yeah. thirty lads, there's a couple of hundred quid to be had. So oh. if Mister Blogs here wants to walk along the back of his peg shouting and swallowing while he's fishing two foot from the bank, he's going to get yeah. the ample up, isn't he? So, it's not floating, isn't it, to be fair? That's it. But for me, it, it, it doesn't bother me, you know. If it scares him, it scares him, you know. But What's, What yeah. sort of line are we using, John? Is it like, we're not going sort of £10 line. Is, is it quite, is it, is the idea to be very subtle with light lines? And yeah, small hook, yeah. Or? So that depends where you're fishing. If, if you're going somewhere like Meadowlands in Coventry, and you're fishing a match down there, which I, which we have done before. Yeah, you're going to be using ten pound mainline. Do you know what I mean? Because they got some absolute munters in there, and the match boys will catch them on method feeder. But if you go into orders, you sort of this time of year six pound line, sort of as summertime eight pound line, no bigger than that. You know, point one eight. And what baits are we using, John? Like, what's, what would you say? Like, I know we, it, it says pellet, but I mean, I'm using like tiny. I've seen you using really small boilies, like little, tiny little dumbbells, and what sort of size yeah. of bait? Is it all really small, or? Yeah, so it depends what you. So if you're pole fishing, it's basically banded pellet, probably four mil, six mil, or even maggot. Obviously, Trev's the bailiff down there. I know for a fact that he goes along and he throws tons and tons of his own bait in there and he also throws like tons and tons of maggots in there. Some mm. of the match boys when they're fishing there, they'll probably use two to four gallon of maggots each mm. a session. Four gallon. That's eight, so, eight, eight pints in a gallon. That is eight pints in a gallon. That's it, yeah, yeah. So they'll they'll each angler will use that in a match each. So that's a lot of, that's used, of maggots. That's a, that's a lot of maggots. So they're used to maggots. So you'll be a fool not to try maggot, wouldn't you? If no. everybody's throwing in a couple of gallon. That's what they're you know. going to be. That's what you've got to use. Yeah. yeah, and if you're sort of method feeder fishing, you use small wafters, little bright colour ones, yellows, um, oranges, the chocolate orange ones, the ringer ones are pretty good. Um, obviously, Andy Siri makes loads of gofters and wafters and all that stuff. So 
yeah, there's loads of different baits to try. But if you are going match angling and you're going to go to an open match, speak to the lads that are fishing there and see what they're fishing with and see what they're catching on. Because there's no point you going there, sitting there with a kilo of worm, trying to catch them, and matey boy's sitting there with bringing his orange chocolate wafters on all day, and he's catching one carp at a time. Do you know what I mean? So, So, yeah, speak to the lads. So, advice going forward then. So, so far, if you want to get into match angling, the best thing to do is just join a local club. Uh, yeah. Go to one of the opens. Um, yeah. Set yourself up with. You don't necessarily need a box, but something to sit on that's comfortable. You're going to want yeah. a couple simple, of keep nets. Uh, a couple of keep nets. You're going to need basic, just your, yeah, your landing nets and things. Like that. And you're just going to need like a, a feeder rod. Yeah. And, that, and that'll get you going. That'll, that's a good start. That'll get you going. You know, you don't need to spend hundreds of pounds on feeder rods nowadays either, because. I don't know how long ago you guys, everyone on here started fishing, but 20 years ago, rods were different. They weren't like they are now. You can pick up a match rod, a Garbellino rocket or whatever they're called, and these cheap Maver rods that are 40, 50 quid, the action on them are fantastic. You know, they literally, they will bend all the way around like that. Do you know what I mean? You don't need to go spend 400 pound on a Guru, whatever they are, Ventus. You know, you don't need to go spend that. If you're no, serious, then yeah, go spend it. It's up to you. So yeah, so yeah, so it's like anything. If, if you're into mm. it, you're gonna spend the money on the things you want. But if you, you're just sort of touching base and getting used to it, I say it's just uh, you just do a bit at a time, don't you? And you build your kit, you know. Because I say I've okay. always thought it's more of a, a float fish you can match fishing. I'm I'm not really sort of too clued up on. I've watched you a few times and watched the really? lads. But a lot of people don't realise you could take a lot of the um, match angling techniques. Into the car, yeah, well, and I, don't, yeah. And I don't understand why people don't do that as much as yeah. what they should, but they seem to yeah. sort of think matches, matches, match, carp is carp. But there is sort of different differences. But if you, you could take the techniques, like when I've watched you knock up your ground baits with a whisk, yeah, and I, I've, I've never done that. I've never done <laughs> that. The craziest thing in the world, well, you know. Did you, you know, I mean, I, I must be stupid. So I've turned up at that bank, you're there with a massive pot, cut the Cage of bait, loads of sitting with a dream, like a uh, dual drill, just what I'm That's thinking. It. If I'm doing that for it's ridiculous. But then when you actually get it out on the sunlight and fluffy, and when you, uh, especially when you throw it out in a, in a clear lake, you can see it flat up, and out sitting, yeah. and then like, I'm throwing mine out, and it's like a big lump of dough smashing to the bottom. So it's all things yeah. that I up. And like, I'd say, through the match, guys, I never, ever would have thought of going park fishing with, literally with a size. 10 with a pellet on a pellet band. A size, a size 10 is big, Mark. How big is it? <laughs> I literally get a size 10 out and I get a nosebleed. How big, how big, how big, how big, how big do you want? What size um, do you got? Sort of 14, 16s are sort of a common size hook that I use. Obviously, if I'm feeder fishing, you'll use a, a Guru QM1 and that'll be sort of 16, 14, yeah. Yeah. Maybe a twelve if you have some big carp in there. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. What's the, what's the, what's the biggest fish then you've had out when you've been match angling? What's I mean? Do these do when you go to a match lake? I mean, what's the size? I mean, do they have carp up to twenty three or fish up to you know? What's the size roughly the carp be gonna? So I, I know um, I've got some big ones in. So I don't know if, if when you go and match fish, what can you expect to catch? Because I watched you guys pull quite a lot of decent sized fish out one after the other. Yeah, I've seen. I think. On the Ash Lake or at orders, I think they're about to 10, 12 pound, I think, and then they move them over. The same uh, as with, with most lakes. I think Old Oak, that's got, I think, a 10 pound in there, 10, 12 pound as well. And, yeah, so obviously Meadowlands in Coventry, there's 25s in there, you know what I mean? So if you're feeder fishing, you know, um, what's that? Size 16 to 8. Yeah. So yeah, if you're fe- if you're feeder fishing and you catch a 25 pound carp on eight pound or 10 pound line, you have got to take your time, haven't you? Yeah. So do you? So I say. So you use a lot of um, hook lengths, hook lengths, and things like that. And do you sort of like have like a five pound, six pound line and go down to sort of like a two pound line at the at the action end, or do you go straight through? I see a lot of guys yeah, tie them up quite a lot. Yeah, I normally sit and make my own. I've got a little got a little tool or. If I'm busy, I'll just buy them and put them in a hook, put them in a hook length box. But yeah, we sort of have like I don't know six, eight pound line, and then you'll probably go down to maybe a three or four pound 
um, hook length, something like that. Um, depending on what you're fishing, will depend on your size of your hook length, you know. If you're fishing for bream, I don't know, uh, um, what's it called, Linford Lakes? What's the big one there called? Kingfisher, uh, is it? Oh, Black Horse or Kingfisher? Black Horse, that's Black it. Horse. Yeah, so if you're fishing for bream on the Black Horse, I've fished a couple of open matches there, you're literally using a distance cage feeder this big, it's massive, you know, and your hook length will be, I don't know, 30, 30 centimetres or whatever it is, they come on a spool already pre-made, so I just use them from Guru, they, they, they yeah. are quite long. Yeah, and then you'll bung that on a cage feeder on like a helicopter rig, maybe, or just or just free running, it, even if you want free running with a couple of line stops on there, and you're chucking that probably 50, 60 metres, that feeder, mm. and you're chucking so you that quite, I I suppose every... You've got, quite, you want to get it, you've got to keep getting it on the same spot. Yeah, that's it. So you need to keep getting on the same spot and and you need to be casting out every 15 or 20 minutes. So imagine that for six hours, casting that many times for six hours, you know, feeding it up with worm and... What's the pattern caterpillar? Oh, it'd, it'd be constant. So, yeah, because constant. I, I mean, the, the one thing that people don't understand is that with, I know it's with match fishing, especially on the pole, it's quite light. And the classic example is, you know, when down Dimmocks, we're all carp fishing, getting yeah. nothing, which turn up with that stupid pole, that's it, yeah. Uh, it was using pole and paste, weren't it, or something? Paste? Yeah, paste dead, yeah. No yeah, one, no one. Yeah, out one on, on paste, and he must have had, what, six carp at our lake? Yeah, and I think he had a temp that day as well, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, do you, you pay, do you use a lot of paste, John, or...? I, do you know what? I can't do it, because there is, there is an art to it. You might think it's quite easy, just put your paste on your rig and drop it out, but no, there is, there is an art to it, and... I think maybe one day I'd like to be taught how to do it, but yeah, yeah you have to you have to have your float, you have to have your float have your float has to have less shot on it, so the weight of the pace takes the float down right. Yeah, you have to fix your hook in a certain place, so when you drop your pole out, you have to drop your pace right so it doesn't come off your hook. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 I'll obviously use maggots, John. I think that'd be easier. Yeah, I'll drive <laughs> you pellets and put them on a band and just catch carp all day. Like, John, so what, what was your... Uh, I'm going to ask do a few little questions. Uh, what was your... Um, Neil said, what is your go-to match rig when you're match fishing? What's your favourite match rig, John? Probably method feeder. I prefer using a rod and reel over a pole. Even though a pole, you can get within the size of a golf ball on the same spot every time because you're shipping it out and you're putting it bang on it. But I grew up fishing a river, fishing the river for chub, you know, free lining it with bread and, you know, catching perch at the weir on rod and reel. So for me, I'd prefer to do rod and reel, but on the method feeder. But if you're fishing matches and all these guys are using poles, if you watch the rate of how quick they catch them fish on that pole, they mm. literally hook, scoop, land in the net. Yes. And, and by the time you've reeled your fish in all the way, they've yeah, probably caught yeah. you. It's quicker, isn't it? Yeah, so it is, and it is, it is a lot quicker, you know. So, but yeah, I prefer using a method feeder. And another question, so I was running for these questions. Another question, John, is what's your go-to boily colour, flavour and colour when match fishing from Robin? Ooh, it's got to be orange, isn't it? Match fishing. Yeah, not I like the, yeah, I do like the chocolate orange. I've got some, I've got some chocolate orange bait here, actually. How big are they? Are they big or? So, let me, um, I've, got some, I've got some pellet here. These aren't the chop. I think I'll, I'm going fishing tomorrow, so I've packed all my gear away. <laughs> yeah, these are, these are the size of the pellets that you're using. Bloody hell. So that's six mil. Yeah, that's quite small. You know what I mean? So the, miss, the missus are going mad now because I've opened the bag in the kitchen. Here's Steve. Smell. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so, John, what's your. Um, I don't think I don't think John's had a chance to see the OP ones yet, Chris. You are. Uh, yeah, it's a new one. I've, I've brought. I'm not too sure if I'm going to keep them on the site or not. Is there a bit of a? Not sure yet. They're good baits, but a bit of a pain. Uh, what's your PB on the pole, John? Um, fifteen pounds. Um, that was that was caught at um, I Kettleby Lakes in Leicester. I went there fishing with my dad and a few others, and we stayed in a log cabin, 
and they've got they had a they had a pole fishing lake, so it was just like a canal, but yeah. it was four, it was bang on fourteen and a half meters across. So I just fished fourteen and a half meters all the way at the back, and yeah, it was about fifteen pound. It took me ages to get in. I was it worked knackered. It, yeah. I was knackered. Like, I literally, I was right. I'm ready to go back and get in the hot tub and go to bed now. Hot tub, Jesus man. So John, <laughs> so basically, so we've got a bit of so we know the basics now. Of getting into match fishing now. So you know about drawing a little club and some of the equipment you can use to get yourself going. Yeah. And some of the base things. That's a great starting point. But yourself, how did you get into match fishing, John? Like, when did you did you start, or was you like? Well, you said you was a river fisherman before match yeah. fisherman. Yeah. So I went. I used to in my spare. So my my dad's house, my family home. I used to back onto a river in Newport Pagnell. So I used to after school, school holidays, just take me. Well, I used to nick most of the gear out my dad's box. I used to <laughs> take it, go over the river for three or four hours and then fish and I used to see all the match lads down there and they used to fish to stretch a river and my dad used to go match fishing a lot of his friends used to go match fishing and I think that was how I just fell into it I just thought I needed to be busy because I'm so impatient I can't like I've been cart fishing with you and I mark I I literally, around all day. I, literally set my, <laughs> I, set my, I set my stuff up I cast my rod and I'm like so what do we do now then Mark you, sit no, you just sit there and chill out. No, I'm not sitting and chilling out. I need to be busy. We watch the water. We watch. We just, yeah. That's what we all do. We sit there and we watch the water for about seven or eight hours. Then we pack up and go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, the point is, you never catch anything, Mark, do you? Uh, I'm the worst person. I don't even know. I, I'm, that's why I'm a host. I don't talk about my angling skills because it's not much there, mate, to be fair. I well, ain't catch anything, mate. <laughs> are we still going to do that little competition then, are we? Yeah, yeah, well, I'll come to your, uh, one of your match lakes with my cart bits and pieces and I'll show you how it's done. Or just one, Rod. But, or, we can, or you can even, if you, if you, if you want to, you can go to Alders, you fish the Specy Lake, yeah, and mm -hmm. I'll fish the match lake, and whoever catches the biggest weight at the end of the day wins, I don't know, a pound, say. I don't know, it feels a bit, sh I, I think we should have... Because one, one, all you've got to do, all you've got to do is catch two 20s, which is a 40, and I've got to catch 40 pounds worth of fish. Yeah, the two 20s for me is going to be rare, isn't it? I've sat down there and caught bream out of that specimen lake, but I weren't meant to catch a freaking bream. No, I reckon no, we could do that. I reckon no, we have one, we, I think we should go to a match lake, have one rod each. Yeah. And then the sea wins. Yeah, what, you use rod and I use pole then? If you want. Makes a difference to me, you'll lose anyway, John. <laughs> What's, What's that to say? What? Uh, why have you, yeah, what's mate? So from Sam King, John, why have you stayed with match fishing and not moved on to other styles? I think you have been... bit, you've got a good carp start, but you've just not really been. Yeah, I've got all the Delkin alarms. I've got the rods. I've got I've got the bivy. You know, a massive bivy. It takes me about an hour to set the thing up. Mm -hmm. um, but I just don't enjoy it, mate. I really don't. I enjoy match fishing because it's busy. Yeah. I'm so impatient, you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, I think I'll just I'll just I'll just enjoy match fishing, yeah. I don't think I can do anything else. Yeah, so if you was to go with any uh angler then fishing, if you had the choice of anglers to spend twenty four hour session a day with, who, who would you do with? Who would you go with, mate? Who's your go to angler? Mm. I think Trevor would be quite good, spend twenty four hours with Trevor. Yeah. I've actually got a I've actually got a coaching day with Trev. Well, I, don't, I don't know if he's forgot if he's if he's if he's on here, I'll just reminded him. Um, she need it, John. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, maybe I would like to go for a day's fishing with Pete Archer because we give away the the three days um, coaching with him, didn't we? I think um, Colin Kidd won it, didn't he? Yeah. And he took. Well, yeah. Um, who did he take? Colin Kidd took. Um, I can't remember now. Um, but yeah, I think a, a day session with him because he, Pete Archer's a great angler. You know, he always catches. He catches more silverfish than anybody, you know. When there's a match um, and the carp have switched off, he just catches skimmers from nowhere, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, so I, said, when we, I was going to say, but when we do the uh, match between me and you, we'll get Chris down here filming it for a day. Um, yeah. Because Chris, Chris Hammond will come down with cameras and he'll film us to see, to make sure you're not cheating, John, because you've got a habit of cheating. <laughs> I never cheat. I never cheat. <laughs> I'm too honest. No, I, I, I would do, yeah, we do. I, I just fish. I normally fish, mate, and just 
What, so nothing? I will have a good, it's kind of been busy for the past couple of years, John. So yeah, same as I have as well. Yeah, but, but we would get, because um, we used to have the matches on, so we're going to hope we get the matches going again. So it's a bit hard with COVID at the moment, because it's putting small restrictions on it at the moment. Yeah, yeah. But I think, I think soon two people can meet outside, can't they? So me and you can just go along, can't we? <laughs> soon. What, so, so question, uh, in a match, John, can you use more than one rod at a time, or is it just one rod? No, it's just, it's just one rod, so you'll find that a lot of the match anglers will have like a, a, a rod sort of roost thing. I've got one, I'm, I never use it, it's a pain in the ass. And you can, store like <laughs> four, you, can, you can store like four or five rods on it, and your top, top uh, sections of your poles. Yeah. So yeah, it's one rod at a time, but you'll find a match angler will probably set up one feeder rod, a pellet waggler rod, maybe a straight lead, depending where you're fishing. And then he'll have his top sections for his pole. He may have 10 of them, you know. So, yeah. Is, is, there, is there a starting age is there in, in match fishing? Is there like, uh, or is it, is, you know, is there like 16 onwards? Or can you, you start like I don't a know. I don't know. I think you've got to be, I think you've got to be 18 every year. I'm not sure. I've never even asked, but I assume because you're, you're paying, you're, is it gambling? I don't know. You're putting money on, aren't you? I suppose it's a form of gambling because you're, you're betting on yeah. to see. You know, but yeah, I don't know, I don't know. junior matches or anything. It must do junior matches somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Nick Barker was on a minute ago, wasn't he? His lad does a lot of junior matches. Yeah, his lad does loads of junior matches. I think his lad's quite good as well. Mm-hmm. So I think Nick takes him out quite a lot, doesn't he, and fishes with him. He's interested in it, isn't he? Yeah, he's he quite a good I've seen him at Dimmicks a couple of times. He's, he's good, don't he? He don't, yeah, he, don't you... fall, he don't fall in like my kids. <laughs> John, do you prefer fishing in the edge or out in the middle of the lake? What, where's Ooh, your score? You do both, didn't you? Really? Yeah, I definitely prefer fishing the edge. I was always told um, when I started match fishing, um, all the bigger fish are in the margins, boy. That was all I got told. Never forget about your margin, boy. Don't forget about it, boy. That was all they said. So, yeah, I um, I love fishing the margin and just ripping them out of the weeds when they when they take it yes it's good how many years have you been match fishing john would you say probably on or off maybe seven eight years maybe on and off yeah yeah it's it's hard it's hard isn't it because with work and life yeah we all have jobs don't we i mean i think this year's good so i think we'll be doing a lot more stuff this year yeah yeah definitely so, John, if you, um, I'm trying to see if there's any more questions. Everyone's just saying to the edge. Yeah, fish the edge of the, fish the edge of the, fish the edges towards the end of the match, yeah. So, the last sort of hour, you'll see every match angler just go straight in the, straight in the edge of the last hour. That's so, so, so it's, it's quite simple. Though. So, that's like a, a, just a simple blast of what match angling's about and, you know. Yeah, the basics, of... isn't it? It's the basics. Yeah. You There's know. a lot involved. I mean, you can start talking float sizes, poles, elastics, setups, yeah. venues, dropping the this, that, and the other. And it's just, just, it's just, it's like any other sort of form of fishing. There's so much involved. But this mm, way, it's yeah. a good, good blast of sort of how, what it's about, and how to get involved. What's this? If you could only use one of the one for the rest of the day, it would be red or white maggot. <laughs> well, I, 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 let me guess. I bet it's red. Yeah, red. It's got to be red for Man United, isn't it? Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> but, John, cheers for a little chat. It's been awesome, mate. Just say, right. It's just a good way to introduce some people into the, the world of match fishing. Um, yeah. We'll start doing some real stuff as we move along. And then we'll sort yeah. of like, when we get, the good thing for us is that eventually, the, the biggest problem we've got at the moment is because we can't get on the bank really as much together. You can't physically mm. show people what doing. But we did say that when you do your next match, it's uh, as COVID allowing. I'm going to sit behind you filming throughout the day, and we're going yeah. to speak more about the stuff as we go. Yeah, yeah, we'll find um, we'll find a venue that we can go to that don't mind um, sort of um, spectators standing around the lake. As long as you stay behind me, I can't see it being a problem. Do you know what I mean? Not yeah. It'd be nice to show people uh, what a real match is. Cause I'll be honest, I don't think many people know what I've, like I've actually been to a proper match. They know of it, yeah. but they've never been been to it. And, you know, yeah, and like, it's, so, very, it is, it's very um, not scary, but 
you know, if it's your first match, you don't know, you don't know what to expect. Do you no, know what I mean? Course. You don't know. When I come to that one with you, just to sort of try and film, there's lots of people, turn, lots of gear everywhere. And who yeah. you're saying, Mark, don't knock over that pole, it's worth about two grand. <laughs> yeah, because I know, I know, I know how heavy, I know how heavy handed you are. And I'm, thinking, I'm just running around jumping over the poles as they're all linked into the back of the fences and stuff. Yeah, I'm thinking, like, please don't fucking tread on his pole, Mark. You know, <laughs> he's sitting there with a Darwa tournament, which is three grand, and there's Mark going, just jumping over your pole, pal, all right? And mate, he's like, <laughs> Well, sometimes I was going underneath. Sometimes I was going underneath it, you know. And I stopped and talked to you about, hey, mate, and I was looking at me like Martin. Don't, don't talk to me. I'm fishing. Tap yeah. was always, like, Dale was always polite to me down there. They were good. They were good lads down there. They would talk to me. Yeah, me and um, me and Dale are going tomorrow. We're going to go down orders tomorrow. You're going to go, go to orders now. You change your mind again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we change our mind like like our underwear, mate. We constantly change our mind where we're going. But yeah, we're going to go to. Um, we're going to go to orders tomorrow and see if we can catch a few. And I haven't used my pole in a while, so it might need some new elastics and stuff like that. So, yeah, get things out, try things, see if my lines yeah. are all right, you know. Yeah, John, when you take me on, mate, that's what you've got to do. I think, to open, I think it should be fair, though. I think we should do... I think we should do a match session. Mm. And do a carp session. It will be just too easy, Mark. <laughs> It's like right. taking candy off a baby. I think teams of two as well would be easy. It'd be more interesting. So I'll team up with, say, Chris or something, and you can team up with one of your match angry friends, maybe Dale or. What are we going to do? Are we going to do, do a match? Are we going to do a match, and then go cart fishing after? Yes, yeah, so we'll do a pairs match. So yeah. we'll do a okay, pairs then. match against the ma uh, match angling. Yeah. And then we'll do a pairs with the carp angling. Yeah. And we'll see who overalls the better, better pair. I'll just, I'll better, I'll better start texting all my match pals then and find out. I'm doing is I might come and do carp tactics against you in your match, and you can do match against me in the carp. <laughs> set up all night though, John. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but you're gonna have to set up my carp, my carp rod. So I don't even know. I know the basics. I know a snowman rig, but I don't have to do it. So you're sure lost, John. You, bet, you, have to, you have to start learning, John. That's your loss. Not, but I can set up a ferret waggler. <laughs> Sitting there with your three ounce weight, throwing it in, chucking all the water out the bloody lake. That, that, that's that's what they use. They use a three ounce weight. Fucking <laughs> mental, isn't it? Three you ounce lead, size four hook. <laughs> I'm not being funny, but no wonder why carp rods need to be so bloody thick. Because the leads you use, they weigh a flipping ton. Oh no, I yeah, well, yeah. Carp it's, rods it's, like they're thick. So, yeah. <laughs> It's a, yeah, it's, it's a skill, John. I'll explain it to you when we go. Yeah. But, John, honestly, mate, I appreciate you, you're a little bit of time right. this evening, pal. Uh, I'd like to say, yeah. just a touch into it, and we'll get some more done soon, mate. All right? Yeah. All you're right. knackered, yeah, John. Right. Go get some sleep, yeah, buddy. Bye. John, bye, pal. Oh, he's gone. So, I really chuffed that John had a little chat with us. Bless him. He looked a bit tired. Uh, it's always hard to explain certain rigs and that, especially when, when you're doing sort of matches, because you just... You need to be on the bank read to get the best sort of like explanation of them all. But it's just a that was a quick insight of what match fishing's about, you know, like the two nets, how to meet people, um, you know, go to local club, and you know, just some advice for those that are interested in match angling, what it entails and what it can do. Obviously, you start off it's like anything, you can work the ranks. I mean, you know, top anglers, some of the top boys in the match industry, thousands and thousands of pounds. Jesus, you know what? Like 50 grand for, for match angling it just seems crazy crazy but you know what it's like anything if you do and you enjoy it that's the main thing and you know if if you want to get involved if you want to match the hooked and angling page it's a match you have a, a match group within the uk angling page we can you can join this is uk match championships there's a lot of match anglers on there if you jump on there and ask for some advice they'll all look after you and help you out there's lots of local uh, sack shops that can set up with the gear so Anything we can do, just feel free to message UK Angling directly. So, a massive thank you again, John. John has uh, been helping me out for years on UK Angling. We sort of jump off, like sometimes he'll be taking over more, or I'll be taking over more. But how it generally works is, John's my wingman, he does all the match side of things. So, he's, he, he, he was very tired this evening, but he puts like all the UK matches on. So, we do a lot of stuff like on Alders Fisher, and he, he arranges a circuit where we help raise money for bits and pieces. So, he, he you know, he normally organises that. So, 
maybe if you are interested in, in match angling and you do want to get involved, maybe coming onto the UK match championships would be the one for you because you will have people like myself there, John, there are a lot of nice match anglers that will help introduce you into match angling. So if you join the match angling group, there's a bit of banter in there, um, but you will be able to see when we start matches up and you'll be able to speak to John and try and join us on the bank. Anyway, guys, uh, again, on Wednesday, it's going to be myself. And I'm going to do a nice chat about Dimmick's Pit. You can ask me all the questions about how I got it, what I've seen, the fish that in there, how I've stopped it, because it's quite an often I get messages all the time. I put a picture up and I'll get people going, what's your stock like? What's in there? What's the, how many pegs you got? What's it like? What's the bottom like? Are there carp in there? Are there catfish in there? How big are the pike? How do you fish for them? Where do we park? And you can, and how did you get it? And how long have you got it for? Ask oh, so many questions. So on Wednesday, it'll be a great opportunity to do the, for the Dimmick's Pit one to have a chat with me about that, especially if you're thinking about uh, coming over to do a bit of fishing with us. Anyway, guys, thank you for the time. God bless. Stay safe. And as always, we always say this, if you're out in the bank, remember, encourage, educate, and inspire. God bless. And have a safe evening.